you know this flower hibiscus this flower is called the hibiscus and this is that green part this part this is the calyx this is the calyx and calyx is the first wall of the flower number 2 it is a collection of sepals this is one sepal this is another sepal there are many sepals number 3 it is green in color and four it protects the flower in the bud stage see in the bud stage for example this is the bud stage see this is an artificial flower this is the bud stage flower is inside and the sepals are covering the flower and protecting the flower so what is the function of sepals the function of sepal is it protects the flower in the bud stage this is the first wall calyx now we come to the second wall of the flower that is called the corolla in this corolla also we have to remember five things corolla is the second wall of the flower this is the first point number 2 it is a collection of petals see this one is the petal this is another petal this is a petal this is another petal in this one. yes corolla is the second wall of the flower it is a collection of petals and it is the colorful part of the flower see it is very beautiful third point it attract the insects for pollination so these are the four points the fifth point i will tell what is the first point corolla is the second wall of the flower number 2 it is a collection of petals number 3 number 3 it is very colorful and it attracts insects for pollination these are the three things but according this calyx and corolla you must understand two things see the corolla here this corolla you see these petals these petals they are free from each other they are not touching each other they are not joined with each other like this so if hmm, if the petals are not joined with each other there is a word for that what is that word for that polypetalous it is called polypetalous it is there in government book poly petalous this is one petal this is another petal this is another another not joined that is what and calyx is also if they are joined together like this where is the other flower that's missing if they are joined together yeah they are joined together that is called gamopetalous so there are two types of corollas sorry your sound is mute are separate from each other like this this calyx is separate from each other so it is called polypetalous polypetalous and um this this sorry you are muted sir it is called the andrisium the 
the andricium you can remember four things about andricium number one andricium is the third wall of the flower then it is a collection of stamens which are male reproductive part of the flower now see this is a stamen this is this is a stamen this is another stamen this is another stem all the collection of stamens is called andricium andricium is the collection of stamens and they are the male reproductive part of the flower now see a stamen has two two parts now one this is a long filament it is a long filament this is the filament and a bulb that is called anther so there are two parts for so when i write a stamen it is a long filament and a bulb that is called anther inside the anther you have pollen grains these are the pollen grains and there are male gametes inside the pollen this is what you have to understand about the andricium now the final innermost wall of the Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Your answer. Are you able to, sir? Connection is gone, I think. What happened, sir?
Sir, is it heard? Yeah, now, now it is heard. Children, are you able to hear? Yes, yes sir. sir. After very yes, short, it is gone, and uh, I was still simply speaking. Sir, is still going to start. Gynosium. Gynosium is the last wall of the flower. It is the innermost wall of the flower. Now it is also called pistil sometimes. Gynosium and pistil. Now a gynosium is made up of carpels. Where is that? Gynosium is a collection of carpels. Sir, video gone. Is it? This, 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 one. this one is the gynecium. You see, this, this one is the gynecium. Or you can call it carpel. And these things are the andricium on the top. This on the top, that andricia. Did you see that? This long one. This is ovary. This, this one is the ovary. This is style. This is stigma. Three things are there: ovary, style, and stigma. This you can draw like this. This is the stigma, this is the style, this is the ovary. Inside the ovary there are, this is the embryo sac, embryo sac and ovules are there inside. Now we'll start from here. So this is the structure of flower. Flower is made up of four parts. They are called four holes. First is calyx. Number two is corolla. Number three is andricium. Number four is gynecium. Gynecium is also called as pistil. So this is the, the structure of flower we have learned. Now, have you remember, do you remember pollination? How many remember pollination? Maybe, no? all of you. So pollination is, this is uh, not going, okay? Not going. So pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. So the, Define pollination. If a question comes, define pollination. You have to say pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from. Now see, this is anther. Inside anther, there are pollen grains. From here to stigma, it will go like this. I is not getting rubbed, so I am just going to. Okay, but there are two types of pollination. Names of two pollinations. Number one is self pollination. Number two is cross pollination. What is self pollination and what is cross pollination? Self pollination means the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower or 
the flower of the same plant another flower of the same plant this is called self pollination but cross pollination means the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma from one flower of one plant to the other flower of another plant but of the same species this is called cross pollination so now after pollination the male gamete and female gamete will join and they get fertilized fertilization is the fusing of male and female gametes and finally they form zygote and zygote will become embryo and embryo will become new plant this is what is called fertilization but i said today i am going to teach about double fertilization all this you know already from small classes you have been studying about the structure of plant maybe you have forgotten but you know already what is calyx corolla andrisium gynecium pollination self pollination cross pollination all these things you know but i am going to talk about double fertilization what is this double fertilization now see uh, this is not going to so i made one andrisium this one you see can you see yeah. now what is this this is the carpel this is the carpel you know now what is this part this part is the stigma this is the stigma the long narrow tube is called the style this is the style and the base swollen base is called the ovary so there are three parts for a carpel what are the three parts very important from now onwards there are three parts number one this is the stigma then style then ovary now inside the ovary what happens there is a chamber like this there is a space like this this part is called embryo sac so this is the ovary and inside ovary there is embryo sac embryo sac s a c sac now inside the embryo sac there are eight cells see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 there are eight cells inside the embryo sac now there is one opening here this there is an opening this is called micropyle micropyle micro pyle this one and here there are eight cells this is micropyle the three cells on the top of embryo sac opposite to micropyle now remember the words i am using three cells on the top of embryo sac top of embryo sac opposite to micropyle three cells on the top of embryo sac opposite to micropyle they are called antipodal cells antipodal cells and this like this is not right antipodal cells they are the antipodal cells now these three cells which are near near the micropyle three cells which are near the micropyle now these two the first and the last are called synergids synergids
and the central one is called egg cell egg this is called egg cell and these two in the middle it is called secondary nucleus secondary nucleus sometimes called polar nucleus so have you remembered all the names inside the embryo sac all the names how many cells are there in embryo sac there are eight cells in the embryo sac now three are on the top three are down two are in the middle what are the names of all these three cells you must know the top three cells in the embryo sac top of embryo sac opposite to micropyle they are called antipodal cells this is the antipodal cells the three cells which are near the micropyle this and this they are called synergids they are called the synergids the middle cell is called the egg cell egg the egg cell and these two they are called the polar nucleus or the secondary nucleus so these are the names inside the embryo sac now when this is the female reproductive part now when this, this is the male reproductive part what is the male reproductive part called so the pollen grains will come from anther and fall on stigma this here pollen grains will fall on this is one pollen grain it has come from anther and fell on the stigma now what happens inside the pollen grain there are two cells two male cells one is called tube cell tube cell and other is called sperm cell a pollen grain has two cells number one is tube cell number two is sperm cell the tube cell produces a long tube like this see there is a long tube like this. and the sperm cell is traveling inside that this is the sperm cell so this pollen tube is coming growing like this and it will come down like this this is the pollen tube and enter into the micropyle this part is called micropyle that one so this sperm cell is coming like this in the tube and it will enter into the micropyle when it comes here the sperm cell becomes two parts two haploid nuclei it becomes two parts one thing becomes two parts one sperm cell becomes two parts and it will go inside here two parts are there one part will go and join with the egg cell this is the egg cell so this is one fertilization so joining of sperm with the egg cell this is called one fertilization and that will form zygote and the zygote will form embryo and the embryo will grow into new plant this one but the other thing will go and join with this two nuclei 
and total there are three nuclei that's why it is called triple fusion triple fusion so here also there is one fertilization here also one fertilization that is why it is called double fertilization so this will grow into endosperm and this will grow into embryo embryo and this will be giving food to the small plant so this type of fertilization takes place in angiosperms only double fertilization how many understood you want me to tell again or not hello hello sir so understand yes how many understood that sir so understood understood yes, sir understand okay okay i will just revise one time i will be asking questions then you write in your copy how much you understood or should i uh, should i give definitions you want definitions yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. Two definitions i will give very important definitions i am going to give please write put in mute and please write number 1 What do you mean by antipodal cells? What do you mean by antipodal cells? Now, if you send me your email address, I will send all the answers to you. If you want to read, just send me the email address. Then I will send all the things to you. okay one or two very important definitions i'll give you please note down what do you mean by antipodal cells the three cells in the embryo sac the three cells in the embryo sac which are opposite to the micropyle which are opposite to the micropyle are called antipodal cells what is polar nucleus
the two cells the two nuclei sorry the two nuclei in the center of embryo sac are called polar nucleus so the other things i will send send to you but please note down some questions and try to answer yourself name the parts of a carpel just write now only name the parts of a carpel this is the carpel how many parts main parts are there in a carpel now what is this part this part is called stigma sticky part that is called the stigma what is this part called test your knowledge it is called style the long narrow tube is called style what is this bulging part bottom part which is broad broad base is called that is called ovary what is there inside ovary inside ovary there are ovules stigma style ovary ovules now how many cells are there inside the embryo sac this is called embryo sac there are eight cells in the embryo sac eight 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 name these eight cells what are these three cells called which are on the top of embryo sac opposite to micropyle the three cells which are on the top of embryo sac opposite to micropyle they are called antipodal cells antipodal cells now these three cells they don't have a single name they have different names the first cell and the last cell they are called synergids synergids s y n e r g i d s s y n e r g i d s synergids and this middle cell is called egg cell two synergids and one egg cell three finished three finished now two are here they are cells they are cells but these two are not cells they are nuclei and these two nuclei are called polar nuclei polar nuclei or you can call secondary nucleus polar nuclei or secondary nucleus this is all about the embryo sac now one pollen grain has fallen into the stigma it fell on the stigma inside the pollen grain how many cells will be there how many cells will be there there will be two cells what are the names of these two cells number 1 is the tube cell number 2 is the sperm cell tube cell and sperm cell what the tube cell will do it will produce a long tube that tube is called pollen tube the pollen tubes will grow 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 and they will grow into a whole ear entrance that is called micropyle so pollen tube will grow tubes like this and who will be traveling in that tube the sperm cell will be traveling in that tube so the sperm cell is coming 
like this and it before entering into the micropyle the sperm cell splits into two parts half half it becomes that's why we call it haploid cells at first it is different now it is haploid it became two parts one part will go and join with the egg cell the central part the central cell is the egg cell so this will go and join with the egg cell both will join that is fertilization joining of male gamete and female gamete the sperm and the egg that is called fertilization this is the first fertilization now this will become embryo the sperm and the egg fertilizes and they become embryo that will grow into new plant the sperm has become two parts no one part has gone here the other part will go and join with this two nuclei already two are there now one is coming and joining now it became 3n so it is repre represented by 3n triple fusion it is called three things are joining that is why it is called triple fusion so how many fertilizations are taking place here is one fertilization sperm and egg first fertilization second fertilization is between sperm and polar nucleus second secondary nucleus this is the second fertilization so because there are two fertilizations you call it as double fertilization and double fertilization takes place only in angiosperms this is today's lesson so you must know about calyx corolla andrisium gynesium their colors their um, functions all you must know especially you must know about this carpel if there is only one carpel okay sometimes there are two three carpels that time you call it as pistil collection of carpels is known as pistils so you must know about the structure you must know about the double fertilization that is taking place so i hope you have understood this lesson and there is there are some more things which i don't need to say i think binary fission then multiple fission budding fragmentation sporulation and all these things they are very very easy topics i don't need to say i think but if you have any doubt send your questions to my email and i will clear it to you either in the class or individual so do you have any doubt in budding fission multiple fission you can on and tell me now otherwise we can close our class you can come the classes ganesh sir ah uh, hello ganesh sir my class is finished thank you so much sir this is such a wonderful class thank you sir uh, the, the class is very very wonderful sir thank you 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 sir our student will expect more classes sir okay sir very practical yeah so my dear student did you enjoy the class yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. so tomorrow also uh, sir will come okay sir okay sir okay then i think you will have to join visitor class also no this this evening yes sir yes, sir, sir. in five class Weekly, okay. how many classes, sir? Can you, sir? Sir, weekly, how many classes they are keeping? They they are expecting. They they are expecting. Ah, uh, two oh, classes, classes in a day, sir. But I I I teach them for only one. Sir, every day. Sir, every day. Sir, every day.
Let's go for at least two, three classes. Two, three, three classes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thursday, I will take. Uh, okay, sir. As soon as possible, sir. No classes. Okay, okay. I'll take on Thursday. Wednesday, I will leave. And Thursday, I will take. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, sir. Same time. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, children. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you, sir. End the class. Class end. Make this order. Make it. Sorry. Thank you.